Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and today I caved. <laughs> I have a Tartarus, but I needed more buttons. Or I just wanted more. No, I needed more buttons. <laughs> and so that's why I bought the Razor Orb Weaver. Yay! But that just means the Tartarus may be a giveaway in the future. <laughs> anyway, so this is the Razer Orb Weaver. This is the Elite Mechanical Gaming Keypad. Now, um, it doesn't say that it's Cherry MX Blues, but that's what I've read online of what other people have said. Um, but uh, I think we'll know once we uh, take a look at it. But my guess is they are blue kales. Here's everything that comes in the box, of course, you get the orb weaver, but let's take a look at some of the accessories, or just documentation. You do get two razor stickers, mine got a little bit, you know, crimped, mm -hmm. but it's okay, I won't use them anyway. <laughs> and then you also get this guide, well this is just congratulatory, um, you know, piece here, and like, follow them on their uh, various social media. And last but not least is this user guide. User guides are, oh, and here is uh, Synapse 2.0. Make sure you do download the software or you won't be able to program this keypad. And uh, what else? I will show you the software in just a bit. It shows you how to uh, plug everything in. and uh, But you know, now that I look at it, it didn't really show how to um, you know, adjust these pieces. I had to figure it out myself, but it wasn't that difficult. Now for the cabling on the orb weaver. So you get this uh, rubberized cable, as well as I believe, what is this, gold plated? Yeah, USB 2, I think. And they even included this little piece here. I believe this is for, uh, to protect your wire. It's this little plastic little piece here. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the rear of the orb weaver first. So on the bottom, you do get some metal here for uh, where you will adjust this thumb panel. And you get some rubberized feet to keep this unit in place. Of course, not gonna show you the serial number, but do you like how I started using a purple tape? Yes, it's for Joanne Tech Lover. Ha. Anyway, um, and it's, I have to admit, it's, it's like real solid. And you also get some more of these like vent holes right here, or is that just, uh, probably just design. Alrighty, um, now on this side, before I talk about the buttons, I do want to show you how to change up your setup here. So you can move the entire palm and thumb rest by pushing this button in and then pressing it in. So both sides already. And then you can move this thumb piece. There is this little uh, piece you could push here, push out, push in. So depending on what is your uh, most comfortable um, preference. Anyway, and then the thumb piece, I was like, oh, how do I do this? Because uh, when I move this entire piece, this lever moves. So what you do is you actually just take out the pin and you hear that click. And then you could move this either way. I find this position most comfortable, but maybe you want more of a sloping action. And then you go ahead and just press the pin in and it stays. But since I'll be using it every day, I'm going to keep it like this. <laughs> and um, also you get this kind of textured soft finish on the palm rest, as well as this texture smooth finish on um, the uh, wrist rest. And this is definitely more comfortable than the Tartars, I have to admit, but then you are also paying what, like 30, 40 bucks more for it. And oh, Oh no, this isn't soft touch, this is just plastic. Alrighty, now onto the button setup. You get 20 programmable buttons just up here. I love it, love it, love it. <sighs> I'm so excited about this. Um, and I kept the center ones, the WASD, and I wish you know they could throw in some different keycaps, but anyway, I kept that the same, but I pretty much just used the top row for like my map and spells and whatnot menu, and then I used the ones around the WASD for um, my specific macros and key functions and stuff like that. Now, so those are 20. And then you get this, uh, ooh, this is definitely much more comfortable and uh, yes, than the Tartarus. I, I just mainly use this for my key map switching, but you can also set it to joystick, macro, whatever you want. So there are eight buttons here. Yes, um, and, or also you could just make it directional buttons and make them four. You could disable buttons as well. So, so you got 20 plus eight, and then you get two more. Um, on default, this is your space bar, but my hands cannot reach it because I have like itty bitty, well, it can reach it, but it's not comfortable. It's like, I use this for my space. And um, so that's 30, 20, eight, 
9.30. Alrighty, so that is a look at uh, this um, keypad. And also over here, you'll notice that there, there will be LEDs and they will change color and grouping depending on which key map you are on. Um, you get eight profiles essentially with each profile um, that you set to the keypad. Here's a closer look at the keypad. I took off the uh, four keys so you can take a look at the switches. Um, as you can see, these are individually backlit keys. There is a, uh, an LED on top of each switch and uh, we know it's cherry because it says cherry on the, the ends here. So you know it's by Cherry. Well, these are the uh, blues. And it's 50 gram actuation, which is pretty standard, but I have definitely seen other Cherry switches with different resistance, as well as um, this 13 key, which is the uh, WAS key, yes. <laughs> um, I do like that there is a nub here, so when you feel for it, you know. But like I said, I would have liked it to be a little more obvious, um, as all the keys do look very, very similar <laughs> in the dark. Okay, and also, um, I wanted to mention that you do get this kind of sloping form on uh, the keypad. This is really just for your comfort. And the keys, each of the keys do have, a, uh, I believe, a light soft coat to it, whereas like the palm rests are a little bit thicker. But um, uh, here it is, the uh, blues. And uh, it also is, of course, bumpy and clicky. So quick sound test for you. Now here's a demo of the LEDs. Um, I just wanted to show you, they're actually pretty bright um, and I have it on pulsating because you can only change it from static to pulsating using the software. I wish that uh, it were otherwise, but so here's the key map area. You can also see it over there, but you can't change it obviously unless you're plugged into the Razer software. Yes, lovely Razer. Alrighty, <laughs> but there you go. Here's a look at the Razer Synapse software that uh, should be compatible with many of Razer products, such as the Orb Weaver, I know, um, the Ultimate Stealth Keyboard, as well as uh, the Tartarus, um, all of which I have uh, reviewed and got to test, which is pretty awesome. But I want to go over the keypad customization first. So this is very, very much like the uh, Tartarus, and um, you can go ahead and check out that video if you're curious about the differences between between the two. So on the side view, uh, you get these, well, one, two buttons, and then eight buttons here. I just like to keep these as key maps so I can switch between the uh, character map for when I'm in World of Warcraft. As you can see, this is my World of Warcraft profile. You can uh, add many different profiles and each profile comes with eight key maps. So that's essentially eight profiles in one, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> and you could keep it as key maps or as directional buttons, or if you wanted to, um, let's say you wanted a keyboard function or mouse or even a macro for one of these key maps, which is a bit harder to access in my opinion, but some of you have a very dexterous little fingers. Um, and then you could also uh, have it as a joystick or go ahead and uh, disable it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel since I want to keep it as key map. Same thing with directional pad. If you choose to have this, then you'll lose the button setup obviously. And you can also assign different functions. But we are going to exit out of these. Now in the top view, uh, here are your 20 buttons, so five times uh, four. And I absolutely love this. I mean, the reason why I got this is because the Tartars just didn't have enough buttons. <laughs> so I was able to set, uh, actually, you know what? We're going to go to key map one. I did already set that for my characters because I was so excited. It was like, I'm going to play some WoW with this. <laughs> so up on top, of course, map, and then I have my pet menu, and then my, uh, you know, glyphs, spells, and then I also have, uh, what is this? Isn't uh, the uh, quest? Yes, quest log. And then down here, I have some other buttons, which is just um, for my action bars. And it's because the Tartarus, I couldn't have enough button buttons for the action bars and for this top menu here. So that's why it's so useful. And if you'll notice when I change key maps, the LED here will change too. So you know exactly which key map you are on. 
But we're going to go back to uh, this first one. I was just like really, really excited. And let's go to Keymap 3 since I haven't set anything for that yet. And I'm going to show you, it's basically the exact same way on the side is that uh, go ahead and let's say you want a keyboard function. And I want this keyboard function to be like, oh, so I just type an O and save. And uh, let's bring up the notepad. Okay. And then we're going to press the uh, one, I mean the corner one and then we'll come out as O. Very cool. Now let's say the uh, two, we want to set a macro. Um, let's add a new macro, shall we? You can add it here or in the macro section here. We're going to call this one QWERTY because I just love doing that. And then we're going to record. And what I love about the macro uh, record delay is that it records the delay in real time which is so helpful because I can just wait like I don't know, like a second or two uh, before I hit my next command and it's very very helpful in WoW because it takes time to uh, warm up spells so I'm gonna go ahead and hit record and then just type in QWERTY and I'm gonna wait a little bit and type in the Y Yep, and then let's stop, let's save and save. Oh, and also one more thing, you could choose to play it once, multiple times, uh, toggle continuous, you know, play while sign key is pressed. I mean, like the things you can do with this is just uh, pretty amazing. So we're gonna bring up this uh, notepad again and then press the two, shall we? It's gonna wait for the Y. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because uh, I'm not too great at knowing exactly how many milliseconds it takes, you know, for this spell to end. I don't want to calculate it, so I, I love that they, they record in real time. So let's bring this back down. Um, and also, let's take a look at how to create a profile. You can create multiple profiles, and like I said, each profile does have uh, eight um, key maps. So we're going to go ahead and just plus and let's call this one you know oh gosh what am i thinking about <laughs> hold on peanut butter jelly tab <laughs> oh they won't let me finish this okay um anyway yes so i think you just uh type it out and there it is. So you can go to your separate profiles like this and there you have it. And if you want to trash your profile, you can just go ahead and hit the little trash bin here and there you have it. And you could copy, import, export uh, profiles as well. Uh, link a program. And also let's go to, you know, I want to go to lighting first. So let's go to lighting. So you could have your uh, keypad pulsing or just have it on static brightness and adjust the on or off. Kind of would have been nice to be able to adjust this like um, maybe, you know, on the keypad itself, but that's not that big of a deal. I mean, you'll, you'll have this keypad with you, you know, very close to your PC, so I'm sure this will be uh, running in the background. Alrighty, and then you can also switch all device lighting to off when display is turned off. Mm, look at that, very, very cool. Alrighty, now we're going to go into macros. Uh, this is where, I believe this is the only place you can delete macros, like if you create one here. Uh, let's go back to customize and keymap3. Hold on, let's go to World of Warcraft. Uh, let's say you're on this macro. There's really no option to delete it here. So what you have to do is you have to go into here. Let's find QWERTY, shall we? Because all of these I need. <laughs> so here's QWERTY and just go ahead and hit the trash bin. Yes, because we do not need it anymore. Um, and you could also, of course, change the macro name here and create a new macro here. It, it, it's, it's really, um, they just give you multiple ways to do this, which is great. Once you get used to the software, it's um, actually pretty straightforward and really easy to use. And you could also, you know, record delay in real time or, you know, a specific millisecond that you want because, you know, you don't want to make any errors um, or no delay where it just whoosh, comes out cordy. <laughs> Alrighty, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on record delay. And then there is an add-on section. 
I am not too sure about this, but if you guys found out, find out anything, go ahead and share it in the comment section. Um, as well as uh, there's a little gear icon here, so you can check for updates, submit feedback. I have this automatic uh, razor update prompt that comes up, which is very, very helpful. And that concludes this uh, tutorial of the Orb Weaver, well, just the Synapse software for the Orb Weaver. And now for pros and cons. So what I love about this, aside from a major upgrade from the Tartarus, I do love all the buttons. It's perfect. Perfect number of buttons. I, I wouldn't want it to be more, but maybe I would have liked it to be just a little smaller. Um, and also love that you can adjust all three pieces here. Not that it really makes a difference for me personally, because I have these tiny little hands and I just, most compact setup is like a win for me and even smaller would be great. Like the parts, I wish the parts were just, just a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, most uh, game gaming peripherals and whatnot are made for men, but I wish they would make one for some daintier hands. Alrighty, um, and I do like that this thumb wheel here uh, is a lot more comfortable, I believe, anyway. And also, it's nice that they included this uh, cable wrap. Now, on to the cons. What do I not, not like about it? And the main thing is just that it's too clunky, it's too big, you know, and wish it was just you know, wish they could shrink it just, just a little bit more, um, and then it would be perfect for me. Um, as for other cons, um, I don't really have too many because I was using it yesterday and I was like just really, really happy with it. So I'm like, yes. Well, that wraps up this review on this Razer Orb Weaver Elite Mechanical Gaming Keypad featuring the Cherry MX Blues. Now, I'm not sure why they won't uh, advertise that, uh, but maybe because they use both Kales and Cherries. Not too sure about that. Um, anyway, so if you like what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe. Yay! <laughs> also, please don't forget to follow me on social media, uh, Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Food Lover Twitter, and uh, twitch.tv slash whaletune, where I game stream with Tim Weekly. Also, please help donate and uh, build this channel with me. Yay! And also feed me. <laughs> Last but not least, go ahead and check out my store, MV Store, so that you can see my 8.5 by 11 autograph prints that I sell on there and if you like any of them go ahead and purchase to your heart's content. Alright I guess all that's left to say is mwah, love you much!